Okay, YouTubers, what we're going to do today is we're going to switch this pressure switch and this pressure switch out for the new aviation pressure switches. And there's a couple of things we have to do. Uh, number one, the aviation pressure switch has a screw terminal. So we're going to have to change the actual fittings on the wires here because they are the little tab things that slip on. And we'll change those after we've done the switches. And the way we're going to do this is the up gear line is pressurized at the moment, which means the bottom or I mean the down gear line is pressurized, I'm sorry, which is this one. So this side should be no pressure. So we're going to unscrew this one and quickly change it. And screw the other one in. Hopefully we lose very little fluid. And this is what the towel is here for, to collect that. We'll pull these wires off. And then we'll put the gear up. And that will depressurize this side. And we'll switch this one out. So it's just going to take a pliers and a pair of channel locks here. They're not in real tight because they have some sealant on them and everything. So and it's just a standard pipe thread. So I'm going to uh, remove the first one here, see how it goes. Unfortunately, I don't have a way of holding the camera so you can watch. Uh, so we're going to shut it off here and then we'll go from there. Okay. Okay, YouTubers, we have replaced the uh, pressure switches. As you can see, this is the new one. And as you can see, we bled out quite a bit, unfortunately. This one actually uh, changed with hardly any coming out. But unfortunately, this one, the pressure gauge used to be on this side of the line over here, but this as you can see is a much smaller unit and there really wasn't room for this one to be over here so I had to loosen up these two fittings and rotate the T junction and now it's over here and when this gets pressed down and this squeezed down it'll all clear the flap thing without a problem but uh, in the process, I uh, leaked probably about an ounce of fuel, or not fuel, but uh, hydraulic fluid, and you can see it's all over the place. I'm going to clean that up, and then I'm going to change these uh, wire ends here to fit these, and uh, then we'll test the system out. Okay. Okay, YouTubers, as you can see, after a little bit of playing around, the wires are connected back with nice eye terminals on the screws. This is the new fitting. The lines are all tied so they can't move. And this is the flap operator here. And as you can see, we'll run it up here. It clears everything, so there's no problem there. And we have the other fitting over here on this side this time. And we mopped up all the uh, spilled fluid. So now is the big test. So what I'm going to do is right now the gear switch is up. So hopefully I'm going to turn the master switch on. something here that the gear is showing up but when I do pump it I'm getting an indication of some of the green here I guess that's a pressure fluctuation in the line Let's see what happens when I get it all the way up at least I know the gears in transit see what 
happens here. Should be almost up. So I do have an up indication, which is good. Now let's put it down and see what happens here. Okay. Here we go. Now you can see the difference. I'm in transit. So now the blue light's flashing. That's just fluid being sucked out of the line and not being sucked out of the line, I guess. The green light has got pressure building. And let's put it all the way down. I'm bleeding air out of the line. I can feel that. And here we come. We're getting down. We're going to be in the pressure zone here. And there's the gear down right there. Now. So, we have a green light. There we go. If I pump it hard, I lose the blue light and I've got all green. So, I guess I have an in transit type pressure system going on here. Let's me know, at least the lights are working. So, I know that it's in the down cycle along with the position of the handle on the pump. And if you look here, there's no leaks, so we're all good to go. Don't see anything else that needs to be uh, addressed, but uh, I've got those fixed. So I'll cycle the gear a few more times, make sure the reservoir is full because I did have a little air pocket go through the pump. But it should have gone right up to the reservoir and be filled. But uh, it's interesting that there is a little bit of pressure in the opposite line. I guess that's when uh, a few of the uh, fluid is being, the, when the cylinder has got fluid in it and then it's being moved from up to down, that uh, it's under a little pressure. And these uh, pressure switches are a little bit more sensitive than the others, but uh, they're going to give me my up or down indication, and uh, that's what I needed. It's just a reinforcement of the actual position of the hydraulic pumps switch, and uh, this will let me know for sure that there's pressure in that line. So that's about the best I can do as far as gear position, other than looking out the door here, make sure this one wheel is down. And then if I have pressure in the system, the other wheels should be down as well. So anyway, I'm happy with that. I got an in indication now. I can tell fluids moving through the unpressurized line. So everything looking good. So there we have it, you tourists. We have uh, fixed the uh, gear indication light. Now I get to put all these screws in right there and all the screws in back there to put the seat back in. Cause well, as a uh, further explanation of what the lights were doing, uh, when I'm pumping fluid into the side of the line like up or down 
it's getting pressure and it's building pressure so the light comes on and stays on the other line that should be without pressure when the hydraulic cylinder is moving to the other position it is actually pushing fluid through the line back up into the reservoir but it's only doing it when the actual cylinder is moving so when I reach the end of the cycle I can put pressure on the line like either up or down and that respective light will stay lit but the other light will not flicker because there's no fluid moving because the cylinder is at its full extent and basically locked into position so it is a good indicator even though the light is blinking as I'm pumping uh, when you figure out what's going on in the system it actually uh, lets me know that there's actually fluid in that other line instead of air so there is pressure coming back it's going back up to the reservoir where it needs to go and when I reach its limit when I pull on the uh, actual gear handle the pump handle it doesn't show any more pressure because the line is or the cylinder has reached its limit so it's not pushing fluid back so uh, even though it, it initially it seemed to be a little uh, unnerving to see that happening once you figure out what's going on in the system it uh, pretty much makes a good explanation and it actually is not a bad thing to, uh, to be able to see that happening so anyway I now know have lights and I know if the gear is up or down and by pumping the handle I'll know if it's all the way or not by looking for the blinking light on the other end so uh, overall I think it's a very good good compromise uh, like I said I can't see the gear from the cockpit other than the one main gear and uh, even having mirrors in the wings is not really going to help and, uh, so anyway it's one of those things when it's pressurized it's down when it's not it's up and uh, unless I start having some type of other problem I, I'm going to be happy with that type of uh, indication okay take care